Welcome here, Dan Doyle, Recruiting Coach Manager at NCSA, and today I have the pleasure of sitting down with Coach Paziak, who's the head coach at Northern Vermont University, Linden. Coach, how are you today? I'm great, Dan. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, before we get into you know, the, the information about uh, your school and your program, why don't you introduce yourself and, and your coaching background a little bit for recruits to know? Okay. Um, well, I took, uh, I'll kind of work backwards from, um, from when I came to NVU. So I took the job here in uh, October, September, October of 2017. So I've been up here um, three full seasons going into our fourth year. Um, you know, before that I had been, um, I had spent a year at, at, at SUNY Morrisville, um, was doing some student, student services work there and, and working with their basketball team. Joe Smith is the head coach there. You know, I've known him since he's a kid. Um, you know, prior to that, I was, um, I spent almost 16 years as the head coach at uh, Onondaga Community College and in Syracuse and upstate New York. I'm actually from upstate New York. So, you know, coming up to Vermont was a, uh, um, you know, it was a big change for me. Um, you know, in addition to being at, uh, at Onondaga, I had spent a, a couple more years as a head coach at Herkimer Community College many, many years ago. I'd been an assistant at Colgate University at Utica College. Um, early on in my coaching career, shortly after I got out of high school, I, you know, I was a high school head coach for a while. So, um, you know, I've been doing this for a while, you know, you know, 35 plus years and, um, I think this is 36. So, um, you know, it's good for me to be up in Vermont and just a, a uh, um, you know, trying to get things going here and a, a new challenge and different challenge for us. Yeah, absolutely. And, and let me show you the picture of the campus that you sent along and it is absolutely beautiful. So this is what you call work uh, each day is going to this. What a beautiful setting. So you guys tell me a little bit about the campus and maybe your location there for recruits to know too. Yeah, we're, um, we're in Lindenville, Vermont, which is part of Vermont's Northeast Kingdom, northeast corner of the state. We're probably, oh, 35, 40 minutes from the Canadian border. It is spectacular here up in the fall, um, you know, this time of year with the leaves changing the colors. Um, really, really just one of the most uh, beautiful parts of the country or, or, or the world. Um, we're a relatively small campus. We're probably uh, 900-ish students, 900, 1,000 students. Um, in Lindenville, Vermont, which is, um, you know, a small town. Uh, I always tell people the, 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 nearest, the nearest Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot is about 30 minutes away. Um, you know, but we do have, uh, we got you know, three, three really good pizzerias, a great diner, and, um, and one grocery store in town. So um, it's a great place to lock in on school and lock in on basketball. Um, you know, as I tell guys, if you're looking for big city nightlife, you know, where you two blocks off campus or, you know, you know, suburban shopping malls and amenities, two blocks off campus, that's not us. Um, it's a great place to go where you can really stay focused on your studies and, and, and focused on, um, you know, focus on your game and, and really maximizing your skills as a basketball player. Awesome. You said three pizzerias. And if I think back to my college uh, days, that's all I needed, you know, a gym, a school and uh, some pizza. And, you know, that's the, the college uh, life right there for, for many of us. So exactly, exactly. So um, really laid back area and, um, you know, the campus and the community itself, it's, uh, you know, just real nice people up there in this part of the country. Well, good. Well, let's talk about the academics at, at NBU. Uh, what's the academic profile that you're looking for in a potential recruit? Uh, what do you have to see GPA wise, test scores, are you guys test optional? Um, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we're test optional. Um, you know, so SAT, ACT not required. Um, you know, if you take it and submit it, it can certainly, um, it can certainly help you work in your favor and whatnot. Um, but we are, uh, you know, two, five and above is, is we prefer kids that are three or better. Um, you know, that'll help you with financial aid because we're division three school. And, um, you know, obviously the higher your grades, they, you know, our, our financial aid is all academic and need based. So, um, you know, the higher your GPA, the, the, the better package you get in that, res in that respect. But, uh, um, you know, we look for three or better, but two, five or better will, um, you know, will safely get you accepted. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're a rolling admission school, so we don't have a hard, um, hard application deadline. Um, you know, they encourage students to, to be in well before May 1st, but, uh, you know, we've had, we've had students that, you know, we've already got a commit for fall of, uh, um, you know, fall of 21, and we've had other, you know, other kids that play for us that commit, um, you know, summer before they enroll, so, and, and everything in between, so no hard deadlines there. Um, 
Awesome. What are some of the more popular majors on your roster or, or at the school? Well, for our, our specific team, um, exercise science is, it's a signature program at the school and it's, you know, real popular with athletes. Um, it's a great program. I and mean, we've got six kids, I think, on our current roster that are in exercise science. Um, you know, that it's, it's really probably one of the best programs in the Northeast of the country, if not the country. Um, we've got multiple certifications that are, you know, typically not found in, a, in, in your garden variety, exercise science, you know, kinesiology program at a lot of schools. So, um, you know, we've got six kids in that program. Um, we've got probably another four that are in um, business administration or sport management. We've got a business administration major and there are um, several concentrations within, within that. Sport management is popular. Um, you know, we've got a marketing concentration also. Um, you know, then we've got a couple of criminal justice majors. Um, you know, then the rest of our, our roster is, is pretty, um, uh, pretty, pretty diverse. We've got the, um, you know, music business industry, we've got an applied psych, we've got a computer information, um, we've got a pre-med student, and then we've got uh, a couple of guys that are like undecided that are, you know, trying to um, see what their calling is going to be academically. Real good, real good. And then for your team, do you implement any uh, study tables or do you guys have uh, academic advisors that uh, uh, your student athletes can, can utilize if they have questions or, or need help? Yeah, the, uh, well, the university itself, um, we've got a student support center. One of the nice things about being in a school that's, you know, on the small side, you know, like I said, 900 or 1,000 students in that range, um, you know, you get a lot of individual attention by nature. Oh, you got that uh, winter picture up there. Just a reminder that the snow is coming. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. But, it's gorgeous. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Big, great area. You know, we've got actually, you know, not to get uh, too far off the subject, but we've got uh, like an outdoor education and, and leadership program that we don't, as a basketball team, we don't have anybody in that program at the moment, but it's, you know, it's another kind of niche signature program that's really, um, you know, really popular with kids, especially if they want to, um, you know, work an outdoor rack or get into the ski industry, that kind of thing. But nice. uh, anyway, getting back to your, uh, your, your, your question on academic support. We've got an uh, academic support center on campus and there's, there's, there's free tutoring available to, um, to any student on campus. It's, not, it's like unqualified help. You don't have to be, um, you, know, you don't have to have an IEP or, or specific um, directive. Uh, it's available to any, any student here. And you, so some of our guys use that um, quite frequently and it's content specific. So, you know, if you want one-on-one um, -on -one peer tutoring with, uh, you know, with a, a student in a particular class, particular subject, um, that's available to you. And we've had guys that, uh, you know, some of our guys, some of our better students that also work as tutors after they, you know, they may you know, take a freshman or sophomore level class and then, you know, they'll tutor that as a junior or senior. So that's, that's available to every student here. Uh, we encourage the athletes to, um, you know, take advantage of that, um, you know, as they need. Uh, where in terms of um, team specific things, we monitor grades regularly throughout the semester. Um, you know, we have a, a schedule of progress reports that go out, um, you know, to each of the each of the professors, um, get back feedback on, on class performance, each individual class, and we meet with each of our guys, um, you know, when the reports come in each each block. Um, and if need be, we set up a like an individual improvement plan. I personally, um, you know, 30 plus years of coaching, I personally am not a huge fan of the team study hall concept because, I, you know, I think um, there are some guys that, that manage their stuff really well and it, you know, ends up being not that productive time for them. Um, the guys that when we get progress report back, you know, if, if one of the issues is time management or not, you know, not carving out time, um, like I said, we set up an individual program. So that may include like, you know, specific study time, um, you know, in, in the office, in the library, um, in a professor, you know, with a professor during office hours. So try to be um, really individualized in, in, in how we approach that. And, um, you know, it's been pretty effective for us. We haven't, you know, we haven't had, you know, knock on wood again, um, since I came up here in, in 2017, we haven't had, um, you know, any academic issues to speak of with guys. I think That's we've done great. a pretty good job of keeping them on, on track and making progress to degree. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Being a former student athlete and, and coach who uh, had to go to study tables, I would agree. It, it turns into more of a social hour or you end up babysitting and, and a lot of shh, get your work done type, type 
thing rather than uh, productive time there. So it makes sense. Uh, let's talk about your basketball program. You know, uh, what is your coaching style philosophy um, there that you, you implement? Well, uh, in terms of my coaching style, I think that if you, you, you know, some of my guys have, you know, played for me, you know, 15, 20 years ago, they'll come watch us play and they'll say, coach, you're a lot nicer than you used to be. <laughs> uh, um, so, you know, I think that, um, you know, from an on the court playing perspective, we try to be uh, really up tempo. Um, you know, we were uh, led our conference by by pretty significant margin last year in pace and threes attempted, threes made, that kind of thing. Try to play pretty fast. Um, now, if Shaquille O'Neal's clone walked in my door, we might change how we play. But uh, <laughs> assuming that doesn't happen, um, you, you know, we we tend to look to push in transition. We're a two-side break team. Um, you know, when we get in the half court, we're very conceptual. We're, you know, we're, we're position independent. Um, you know, we don't, uh, we don't pigeonhole guys into you're a one, you're a two, you're a three, so forth, or you know, you're a point guard, you're a center, whatever. Um, so we play pretty position independent. All of our guys, you know, work on all skills, um, you know, trying to be a, as well-rounded as possible and as interchangeable as possible. Um, we're a read and react team primarily in a half court where again, you know, we try to play off concepts and play off reads and then you know, defensively, we're always going to be a man to man team as a, as a base and as our foundation and what we do around that depends on personnel. Um, you know, since I've been up here, we haven't pressed a ton because it hasn't really fit the makeup of our team. Um, I said, you know, I mentioned I coached 16 years of junior college. We had teams when I coach at that level where we press 40 minutes every game. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll play, you know, a little zone if our, if our personnel dictates or our scouting report dictates, you know, combination defense, um, you know, things like that. But uh, man will be our base and, um, you know, it's kind of, we teach that first and then try to build off it um, as far as what we, you know, what we do around that in a given season. Real good, real good. I like how you call it position independent. I've, I think the, the word I hear all the time is uh, positionless basketball. So uh, it's a new way to, to phrase it, but uh, seems to be the way uh, college basketball is going and recruits like to play with pace, like to shoot, um, you know, and, and work together. So this is, uh, could be a really good system for, for those looking uh, for, for that type of system. Well, um, you know, I think like, you know, probably you would know as, as well as anybody working with, uh, you know, prospective athletes, like if you grab, in, in today's day and age, if you grab 100 random basketball players, ask them what position they play, you're going to have probably 70 point guards, you know, 25 two guards, maybe about four small forwards. And if there's one guy that confesses to be a post player in the bunch, you'd be like, <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. The, over the last five years, it's gone from power forward to stretch forward to swing to anything to get forward out of there. You know, it seems yeah. like that's come into to that position there where, yeah, forward and, and centers are, are a dying breed. <laughs> so. it, you know, it's kind of, I mean, basketball to, you know, to degrees, a copycat game. And I mean, Golden State Warriors got a lot of mileage out of, um, you know, the, the death lineup and playing small ball and, um you know, space in the floor and shooting a lot of threes. And so I think that has kind of propagated itself throughout the game. You know, what's popular at the NBA level finds its way into the major college level, which finds its way into the um, division two II and three level, which finds its way into the high school level and the club level. So you know, I think that's kind of where, you know, where the game has gone and the analytics piece is also, you know, we're, we use, you know, we do a ton of stuff with that, you know, we use synergy and, um, you know, do a ton of stuff with like efficiency shots and, you know, our offensive philosophy revolves around, um, you know, getting free, getting to the free throw line and then, you know, scoring at the rim and, and, and getting open threes and, you know, analytics will tell you that those are the most efficient shots. And, um, you know, I think the game has, you know, has really moved in that direction. Yeah. Well, don't tell me, I just watched the heat uh, Lakers game three yesterday. Jimmy Butler had 40 points and then shoot one, three. So <laughs> uh, he got to the basket like yeah. crazy. He, yeah, he, was, he, did. He, he was phenomenal last night. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's going to happen again. I still, you know, you know, you, you got this on uh, yeah. recording this. So, you know, if the, <laughs> if, if Miami comes back and win, wins the series, I'll be proven wrong, but I still think the Lakers are, you know, you know, they're, they're the superior team. Yeah, no, I would agree. I would agree with that. But uh, no, just the, the blimp there of, uh, you know, him not shooting a three and, and having a very productive game. But 
that's Jimmy Butler, and, yeah. and, you know, he's one of the elite players, that's for sure. Oh, he was tremendous last night. Um, tell me about your program's culture. You shared, uh, you know, some core values that, that you preach. Um, I, you know, read this and, and see it as like your mission statement and your culture here. So tell me a little bit more about, you know, what um, your program's all about, you know, off the floor and, and what you're trying to instill with, with your players. Yeah. Um, you know, what you have on the screen and our core values, that's really, I mean, that's really what we're built on in our foundation. And, and when I took the job up here in, in you know, like I said, in fall of 2017, um, full disclosure, we had a lot of work to do in that area as a program. Um, you know, not that the, I mean, the guys that were here were good guys and, 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 um, you know, individually as people, um, you know, come in the office, we'll help them out with things and, and whatnot, but, um, not necessarily on board with how, how we wanted the program represented and, and, you know, the importance of being team and, and, and team first and having your teammates back. So, um, we've been really intentional um, when we're recruiting guys, um, really trying to uh, assess and, and get a feel for, um, you know, obviously we want talented players, but we want talented players that are going to be on board with, you know, with our values and, um, you know, be about the team, you know, represent us right and be respectful, you know, on campus. Um, be respectful within our, our team in the locker room, you know, work hard to, to, you know, to be a better athlete, but also, you know, be a better student and be a better young man. Um, and most importantly, you got to be a great teammate. Um, so we're really, and if we get a whiff when we're recruiting a kid that, that maybe they're not on board with that, um, you know, we basically don't recruit those guys. Um, so we have come like in the three years, you know, from fall of 17 to now, we have come full circle on that to where we have, you know, we have great guys in our program. Um, they're fun to be around and they, biggest thing is they enjoy being around each other because I think as a college athlete, um, you, you know, you're, you're going to spend more time with your teammates and that would be the one piece of advice I give to, to any student athlete in any sport looking at any school, you know, really try to get a feel for, um, for the team and the guys on the team or the girls on the team. Um, you're going to spend more time with them than anybody else in your college experience. And, um, you know, being around people that are fun to be around and, and, and you get along with and um, have the same goals and values, I think, is, is really at the center of having a great experience in college. Absolutely, absolutely. And recruits, as you're looking at programs, you should definitely be checking out what's their philosophy, what's their core values, what's their mission statement, because, you know, as, as Coach Paziak just said, this is what he's going to hold you accountable for. And, and, you know, this is the backbone of, of what he does on and off the floor and, and, you know, the core values for it, for seeing success. So um, these things are, are huge and also attract the, the people like coach just said that, uh, you know, will be your best friends and, and, you know, really enhance your college experience. So thank you for sharing this with us coach. And uh, yeah, this is outstanding stuff. And I think it leads to, you know, that the next picture I'm going to share where, you know, not only are you, you preaching it, but looking at this picture, you know, I'd assume this was at, at senior night or, or after one of your games, but you know, you've got that family atmosphere. You've got that, that, you know, I just look at this and I see family, I see teammates, you know, that are happy for one another. So definitely, you know, goes hand in hand that you're not only saying it, but you're preaching it and, and getting the, the buy-in there from, uh, you know, your, your players you inherited and the players you're recruiting fit in that. Yeah, this is, um, this is from our, our senior day this past season and, um, you know, our seniors with their, their families and, um, you know, one of the things kind of neat, we shoot the group shot and they want the rest of their teammates in that, you know, as part of that. And, um, you know, a lot of teams, they bring it in and they say family, but I think our guys really, really believe that and are on board with that. So, um, you know, that, that all comes back or even that's all built on that, you know, the foundation of those core values and, um, you know, being about each other and having each other's back and, you know, caring each about each other as, as, as individuals, you know, and not just mm -hmm. a, a piece on the chessboard. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, this is, is great stuff here. And so tell me a little bit um, um, about, you know, your off season plan. I know at division three, you're a little bit restricted on when you can get your hands on the guy or what you're able to do, but tell me what's the, the fall and spring look like for an athlete when you're, you're out of season. Is it um, senior led? Um, how is that all organized and, and constructed there? Well, I think in, in division three, because of the, um, you know, the contact limits you have with your athletes as far as doing athletically related stuff. Um, you know, you have to be player led. And I think if you have good, um, 
you know, good veteran leadership and, and guys setting good examples. Um, you know, I think any any solid Division three program, probably in any sport in the country, is, is would tell you the same thing. Um, you know, your out of season stuff really need, your 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 veterans need to take the lead on that. Um, we're fortunate here that we have, you know, I mentioned early on, we have the exercise science program and we also have a, a strength and conditioning coach on staff here and they partner, our strength and conditioning coach partners with the exercise science folks to provide um, structured and supervised um, strength and conditioning training for all of our student athletes here. Um, like when we're in season, it's part of what we do. I mean, it's as important, uh, you know, it's scheduled and they're expected to be there just like, you know, if we're going to the gym and practice and working on scouting report. Um, if it's, you know, before we start or after we end, you know, in the fall and the spring, um, then, you know, it's not, it's no longer required, but our guys understand that, um, you know, if you're going to really reach your potential as a college athlete, you need to buy into the strength and conditioning piece. So it's nice for them to have the expertise of a strength coach on campus. And it's also great to have our exercise science folks involved because that gives our students, some of whom are guys on our team, it gives them hands-on experience with actually um, doing strength training, personal training, and they come out with certification. So, um, you know, it's kind of a win-win for the student athletes here and for, you know, for the folks in that specific major. Awesome. Awesome. And then what's the goals of your program for the next four or five years? What does that look like for you? Well, what we're trying to do, um, you know, first of all, we're not, you know, not going to compromise our, um, you know, our core beliefs and our core values in any way. So we want to continue to um, strengthen those and, and um, continue to um, utilize them as the foundation of what we do. From a on the court standpoint, we want to, um, you know, we, we've made some baby steps every year we've been here. We've gotten, uh, you know, a little bit better, a little bit more competitive in our league. And I think we want to continue on that uh, trajectory to the point where we are, um, you know, we're one of the schools that's going to be consistently in the mix, um, you know, at the top of our, our conference and contending for our conference championship year in and year out. Uh, you know, that's, that's where we want to get to and where we think we're um, headed on that path right now. Awesome. Awesome. And then tell me a little bit about on campus. Uh, what's on campus housing like? Do many of the freshmen that you recruit, do they live uh, together? Um, do you make them live together? Um, most of them want to, most of them want to live together. Uh, most of them prefer to um, room with other athletes. Occasionally you'll have uh, somebody that maybe they're, um, we, we see this once in a while with in-state kids that, you know, they're coming and they've got a couple friends from home and whatnot, but um, our our guys typically live together if they live on campus. Um, we have, I think, uh, we have 18 guys on the roster right now. I think we have three that are um, fairly local that um, live at home and commute. Um, you know, one one's about a half an hour away and the other two are maybe 10 minutes away uh, home. So they live at home, but the rest of our team, um, this particular team, pretty much everybody's on campus. We've had, um, you know, the first couple of years I've been here, some of our guys, when they get to junior, senior year, like on a lot of campuses, they'll look for an off-campus apartment. Um, but our particular team this year, um, everybody on our roster, if they're not living at home, they're, they're on campus and they all, um, you know, we have multiple guys in suites. We have, uh, it, we have traditional college dorms, and then we have uh, suites. One one dorm that's uh, suite style with kitchen um, kitchen facilities and everything. So if you live in Rita Bowl, which tends to be up, upper class students, that's fully kitchen equipped. So you, uh, meal plan becomes optional there. Some kids will um, do all their own cooking. Um, if you're in the other dorms, then you're you know you eat on campus. We've got a um, all you can eat dining hall, and we've also got a uh, um, kind of a retail um, cook to order um, snack bar type uh, setup that's available open late hours and um, hours when the dining hall is closed and all that kind of thing. So, um, so there's you know, a couple different options for students to eat on campus. Awesome. Awesome. And then um, is it realistic to work part time or have a work study program uh, while you're being a student athlete there? Yeah, um, we've got a lot of a lot of kids in our program and athletes in general, you know, if they qualify for federal work study, there, um, you know, a lot of kids will work on campus. Um, we hire some people in uh, in athletics for 
things like monitoring the fitness center or the gym or um, working on our, our game administration crew on game day with, you know, everything from scoreboard to stats, to ball boys, to lines, people in volleyball. Um, you know, then we've had kids get jobs other places on campus. Um, you know, the rock climbing wall, the library, student tutors, that kind of thing. So there's there's options on campus if most of them are work study, so you have to qualify that through your, or qualify for that through your FAFSA. Um, we've also uh, have, you know, a lot of our kids have off campus jobs. Um, you know, I've had a couple of different guys work at uh, the local UPS nights. Um, you know, I've got one guy now, uh, he works, he does pest control. So, um, so I think as far as working, uh, you know, a lot of kids at this level, you know, student athletes and students in general, um, they have to work to be able to help with the cost of college and attend college. And we understand that. And um, I think how much you take on is very, very individual. Um, I have had guys in my coaching career that have, you know, had great grades, you know, be you know, dean's list, president's list students, and they've played college basketball and they've worked pretty much a full time job or, or a full time job. I've had other guys that, um, you know, they'll work out of season and in the summer and in the fall before, um, you know, official start of practice and whatnot. And when the season rolls around, they have to dial back to work quite a bit because, you know, just their own um, their own makeup balancing those things is more of a challenge. So, I, I, you know, I think the thing we talk to our guys about is you have to be honest with yourself. You know, if you if you're going to take on school, which you're all that's the reason you're here and you're going to take on college basketball and you can take on a job. Can you, man, you know, and we try to help them with the skills to do that. But can you manage those things in a way that you can do a good job with all of them because sometimes you take on too much, um, you know, you end up not doing as good a job as you'd like to in any one of those three things. Absolutely, absolutely. And so if I'm uh, interested in, in NVU Linden, uh, what's my first step in beginning the recruiting process um, here as a potential recruit? Well, um, basketball specifically, just reach out to me. Um, you know, our website is lindenhornets.com. Um, you know, my email and office phone number are up there and, and I mean, you're welcome to um, reach out to me that way through, you know, through email. Um, you know, we're obviously we're on NCSA. We've, uh, we've got a recruiting questionnaire on the, on the website. That's most convenient for some people. Um, you're welcome to, to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dave Paziak or, you know, we're at Linden B-Ball is our team account. Um, we're on, we're on Instagram with the team account also or in Facebook and whatnot. So, any of those ways, um, you know, I encourage, I encourage folks to reach out to me. You can, um, that's one of the nice things about your system in NCSA. They can email me right through that and it'll, you know, it'll, it'll find its way to my inbox and, you know, we'll respond. And, um, you know, that the, the, the university, northernvermont.edu is the, the university website. Um, you know, that's a great source of information about the academic program and the, the you know, the campus and, and whatnot. So any of those, any of those means, um, works as far as reaching out. Perfect. And then anything we haven't covered here um, about uh, the school or program that, that you want to touch on? No, nah, I, I mean, I think you had a, a you know, really comprehensive um, conversation here. Uh, just that it's a, um, you know, we're, we're doing some special things with our program. We got great guys in it in a beautiful part of the country. So, uh, you know, I think for, you know, for a young man that's looking for, you um, you know, an environment with, you know, with great teammates that, you know, is about values and doing things the right way and, and not having a lot of distractions to take them away from school and basketball. I think it's an awesome place to go to school. And, um, you know, I think we're in a, a program that's heading in the right direction. So, um, awesome. you know, people will give us a look. Awesome. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, you have a, a handful of NCSA players on, on your team right now, and they're, I know they're absolutely enjoying their experience and, and playing for you. Um, so recruits, check them out. Um, check out the school website. And then most importantly, check it out when uh, the season gets going. Uh, a lot of these games are streamed online and you can see Coach uh, Paziak's team, the style he plays, the competition level, and um, always amazed by how each year the streaming gets better and better. I know they're in like HD now uh, from, uh, you know, you, where you can watch anywhere in the world. So check those out and, and definitely check out this program as Coach Paziak is, is building something special there. Coach, thank you so much for your time here and uh, really appreciate the inside look uh, at NBU Linden. 
Thanks, Dan. We really appreciate everything you guys are doing at NCSA and appreciate you having me on today. Oh, our pleasure. Take care. Thanks.